Hello everyone, this is Rashida. My today's video is going to be on logistic regression. We will understand logistic regression first and then we will work on the logistic regression problem in Python scikit-learn library using a real dataset and Jupyter Notebook environment. Logistic regression is actually built on linear regression. So I want to give you a refresher on linear regression. Here is the dataset. We have weight and height. And then if we put weight in x direction and height in y direction, we get these dots. Then if we fit a line that best fits these dots, we can predict height given the weight information. If our weight is 180, the height will be here. Straight line from 180 degree on this straight line and height will be here on this straight line. And our original height is here. But our prediction is going to be close, not exactly the same. So the prediction can be exactly same or not exactly same. Like if when this dot is here, if uh, the weight is 230, the height will be here, right? And this is almost, almost on the dot. So it's going to be really close, the prediction, right? So the prediction can be close or right on the dot or a little further, but it's going to be reasonable. That's what the expectation is from a linear regression model. Look at this data set. We have weight and heart disease. Weight is a continuous variable and heart disease is a categorical variable where we have zero and one. Zero represent there is no heart disease and one represent this person has heart disease. So what happens if we put them in this graph? Weight in x direction and heart disease in y direction. What happens? All the zero values are here on the zero line and all the one values are here on this line, zero or one. If we fit a straight line, it actually does not represent these values, these heart disease values, right? So how can we predict this heart disease value given the weight information? This linear regression style is not going to work, so we have to have something different. So as I mentioned already, this logistic regression also built on linear regression, so we will start from linear regression formula. Look, y equals to mx plus c, where m is the slope and c is the intercept, right? Now, if we don't use this c or y intercept, we will have y equals to mx. Actually, you don't have to ignore c, you can use c as well, but for now, we are just going to ignore. In machine learning language, we do not call it slope, we actually call it the coefficient of x. So, I am changing m to theta. And instead of y, I'm using h because actually we call it hypothesis. So for linear regression, the hypothesis is simply the straight line formula. Okay. Now what happens when we have logistic regression? In logistic regression, the hypothesis formula is different. It's 1 over 1 plus e to the power negative z. And the z is actually this linear regression formula, theta x. So in logistic regression, the hypothesis uses linear regression, but use this function called as logistic function or sigmoid function to bring non-linearity because the straight line is actually not the solution to the logistic regression problem. I already mentioned this function is called sigmoid function or logistic function. And the shape of this function is actually like this, this S shape. And this function takes a value and returns in the range of 0 to 1. The value can be 0 0.2, 0 0.45, 0 0.65, 0 0.8, or anything that is between 0 and 1. Now, if we have this float values from this hypothesis or from the sigma function, how we get 0 and 1 from it? Simply, we choose a threshold. The threshold can be 0 0.5, or it can be different as well, but but for now, just assume the threshold is 0 0.5. If the outcome of sigma function is more than or equal to 0 0.5, we make it 1. Otherwise, we make it 0. That's how we get the 0 and 1. And we use here only weight, one continuous variable. We do not have to have only one variable. Let's go back to this logistic regression formula again. When we had only one variable, the z was theta x. But if we have multiple variables, the z becomes theta 1x1 plus theta 2x2 plus theta 3x3 all the way up to theta nxn. And as usual, the z is used in the sigmoid function, 1 over 1 plus e to the power negative c. That's a very basic and high level idea of logistic regression. 
Now let's work on a problem. This is a Jupyter Notebook environment. Let's start with importing pandas. Pandas as pd. Now the data. pd.read csv. I'm going to use a csv file, hard.csv. So this data set is from Kaggle and I have the link in the description box below. Please feel free to download the data set and follow along. As you can see, we have all this other information, age, sex, chest pain, rest BP, and all the other stuff. And at the end, I have AHD. This is called heart disease. So we have no or yes value. No means there is no heart disease and yes means this person has heart disease. So the task will be to use all these other variables and predict if the person has the heart disease or not having heart disease. So we need to do some data preparation first. Here we have this column that's very unnecessary. I'm going to drop it first. df, df dot drop columns. Now I'm just going to copy and paste this thing. this unnamed column is gone the next is look we have this string values chest pain tal and ahd we need to convert them to numeric values because machine learning algorithms do not understand strings they only want numeric values okay df dot chest pain needs to be in string format let's just copy it Control c dot s type category then dot cat codes let's see df so the chest pain here is the chest pain string the chest pain converted into we have all numeric values right now look we have one null value here let's check how much null value we have dot sum we have only four null values in this C column, right? We have 303 rows and we have only four rows containing some null values. I'm just going to drop them. There are lots of different methods of dealing with null values, but that will be a totally different video. In this video, we are just going to exclude the null values and we only have four rows of null values, so it's going to be easy for us to just avoid them. Df, df dot and drop an A. So look, we just, we do not have any null values. We have 299 rows before we had 303 rows. So null values are gone. Data is ready. Now look, these are all the variables that are going to be our independent variable or X input variable. And this is what we are going to predict, AHT. So this is going to be our Y. So we are just going to separate X and Y. DF dot drop um, columns ahd that's going to be our x we have x all the values except the ahd and for y we have df ahd now we will split the data set we will keep portion of the data set to train the model and portion of the data set to test or evaluate the model we can use train test split method from scikit-learn library from that from sqlearn dot model selection import train test split x train x test y train y test train test split x y then test size 0 0.3 that means we are keeping 30 percent of the data for testing and 70 percent of the data for training and random state is to 21 random state can be any integer we use random state so that we can regenerate the same train test split if necessary let's see the x train now this is X train. You can see we have 209 rows of data for training. And X test, we have 
90 rows for testing. Now look, look at our training features. Some of the data are 50, 60, 30, 40, 50, right? And some of the data are 1, 2, 3, or 0, 1. Some of the data are 308, 212, 166. So some data are really big and some data are really small, like 0, 1. So in this case, this bigger data can be a little overpowering. If all the data in all the training features are going to be in the same range, that's going to be good for the training, right? Because no feature is going to be overpowering. So we are going to use a scalar. We will use a standard scalar. I will go and see in the Google. Standard scalar, scikit-learn, okay? This is standard scalar. You see, it uses this formula, the standardized formula, to scale the data. That uses mean and standard deviation. So each and every data uses like that. Data minus mean divided by standard deviation. And that's how it scales the data. So let's import standard scalar. From sklearn dot preprocessing uh, import standard scalar. Now scalar standard scalar right first with x train x train scaled x train scale we are going to do scalar dot fit transform okay fix transform x train now x test scaled scalar dot transform only we're not going to do any fit for x test it's going to be only transform why is that when we fit the data to the scalar it calculates the mean and standard deviation of the data to be able to calculate this z right when we fit the data it calculates the mean and standard deviation and when we do the transform it uses this mean and standard deviation and calculates this z. We feed the training data so it can use the training data to calculate these parameters, the standard deviation and mean, and then it can use it to transform the data. But we don't want to feed the test data to the scalar because we don't want our model to know the mean and standard deviation of test data. We will keep strictly the test data for evaluation purpose. We don't want our model to know any information about the test data. Okay, we'll simply transform it using this feed data from the training data. Let's check how our scale data set or scale features look. So this is how our scale features look. Look, all of them are pretty much similar range. It just transformed into the two-dimensional array instead of data frame format. Our X test scale also became this same form. Now we will import the logistic regression from sklearn dot linear model import logistic regression oh sorry regression so log reg logistic regression i will use random state zero if we want to recreate this same model dot fit we're going to fit our scaled training data x train uh, scaled and the label y train so the model training is done now we should check if it can predict log reg dot predict if i put x train scaled it should give me y train look it's the y train zero on one value right let's check look our y value or this heart disease data it was zero and one so these are all zero and one value how accurate these output values are log reg dot score x uh, a train scaled y train 
So it says 87% correct. That means 87% of these output values are actually accurate. Okay, this is on the training data, and we already fit the training data to the model, and our model already know the training data so well. Now let's check if it can generalize or it can predict from test data as well. Test and give y test. It shows that 87%, almost 87% of the time, it can predict the test data as well. So our model is pretty strong. You should always check accuracy for training data and test data both. If the accuracy for training data and test data is really different, like if it's 87 and it's uh, on test data is 67, the model is not good at all. We want it good on both training and testing data. Let's check if we can improve this model using some more parameters. So let's take it and make it log rank one. And I'm going to use some more parameters here. Number one parameter is I'm going to use C. C is one. C is a regularization parameter that penalizes the extreme values that should improve the model. Okay. Now I will use the fit intercept. True. Remember the intercept? Here in the beginning in linear regression, we had mx plus c and we said we can ignore the intercept, but we can use it. So here is the option where we can actually use the intercept. All right, let's check how good it does. Oh, sorry, I missed a comma here. So logarithm one, let's check the score now. Logarithm one, one. You can see it's still 87. It didn't really improve much. And logarithm one. Okay, here also it didn't improve much. Let's check if we can use a different C and it can help. 0 0.1, okay? It didn't improve at all, especially in training set. It kind of lowered the value a little bit, but in testing data, it's exactly the same as before. Now let's do 0 0.01. So changing the C and feed intercept didn't do any good. Now, if we go back to our original C1, one is actually the default C value. If you don't give any C value, it uses one automatically. So that's the best as we checked. For this particular data set, changing these parameters didn't do any good, but each data set is different. So the model performs differently for a different data set. In your real life projects, if you do not get good accuracy score like this, like 87% or 86%, you should try changing the parameters, the C value, feed intercept, etc. Lots of time that improves the model performance significantly. So for this model, it didn't change, but I wanted to introduce the parameters to you. That's all I wanted to share with you today. And look, in this model, our output was 0 and 1 only. We call this kind of classification as binary classification. But there are multi-class classification as well. We can have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I mean, multiple classes, not only 0 and 1. We will talk about multi-class classification in our next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, like, comment, share, and subscribe.